today I just have another video. This one is about allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. So as we know, children of God, we have the Spirit of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit, which allows us to continue on the path that the Lord has planned for us. And it also allows us to remain just in the eyes of the Lord. It helps us when we go through difficult times to constantly maintain just in the eyes of the Lord. That is why the Holy Spirit is there. He's our helper and he's also our guider to make sure that we are on the path that the Lord has planned for us. And that is why we're talking about today, allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. So when we are in control, this is when you make your decisions. You choose what you want to do, where and how you are going to do it because you are in control. So we're talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to take control because it knows the future. It knows what is going to happen in the next 30 seconds when we don't. So we are limited, but the Holy Spirit isn't. So that is the reason why we should allow it to take control. So we're just going to quickly read the Bible verse. So this is John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, so this is Jesus speaking, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have told you. So it's talking about the Holy Spirit being a helper and also reminds us upon the things that Jesus has already told us to do, even which is to go out and preach the gospel, to love each other, to teach each other with respect and etc. All the things that Jesus told us to do, the Holy Spirit constantly reminds us so that we don't go astray from the path that the Lord has planned for us, but we constantly remain where the Lord wants us to remain. That is why in John 14 says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name. Now, we're going to go straight away to the main points. So, we're talking about control. So, what the point is going to be about control with and without the Holy Spirit. I am not saying control without the Holy Spirit as in you don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm just talking about in a way that when you allow the Holy Spirit to take control, when you don't allow the Holy Spirit to take control. Because a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit. So, we're just going to use examples to make sure that um, you know when the Holy Spirit is control, when the Holy Spirit is not in control. And ironically, I'm going to use a remote control to be able to show you the examples that I want to go through. So we're just going to use some of the buttons on the remote control to be able to uh, uh, show you with, uh, with and without the Holy Spirit taking control. So the first one, we're going to go without the Holy Spirit taking control. So all the examples I'm going to give here, it is when the Holy Spirit is not in control. This is mainly when you are in control. So the first button that we have right here is the play button. So basically play is when you start something. So without the Holy Spirit in control, you take charge of your life. You decide that you're going to wake up, you're going to leave your house, whether you're going to work or restaurant, etc. Wherever you are going, you're going to go, you are in charge, but you're never asking the Holy Spirit for guidance. You just believe that no, Today, I've woken up, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And that is it. I've taken charge and this is how it's going to be because I'm in control. I press play in my own life. So this is you without allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. You're deciding every single step that you are taking. Now, we also have a different button, mute. So this is without the Holy Spirit. So many times, children of God, the men of God, the pastors, preachers, reverends, um, evangelists, etc., no matter the title, they may come to you and say, you need to come more to the church. You're like, I don't want to listen to that. So you just put a mute to it. You need to give more to the church. You want to mute that. You need to treat each other with respect. You just want to mute that. You don't want to hear those kind of stuff, especially when it comes to things that a lot of us run with. The church and the pastor says, you need to fast for the church. Mm -mm. That's a complete mute. You're like, no, I don't want to hear that. You need to give your tithe to the church. I don't want to hear that. You need to pray more for this brother or sister. I don't want to hear that because you're in control. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. You're like, no, I'm sorry. I have problems of my own. I pray enough. I don't need none of that. So when the, when the um, when a pastor or a reverend, or a man of God, to be more precise, is telling you this thing, you're like, mm -mm, I don't want to hear it. It could even be your close friend saying, listen, what you're doing is wrong as a child of God. Like, no, I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. Because you're in control, so you know when you want to put mute upon the things that you don't want to hear. Now, this is the rewind button. 
This is you always constantly going in the presence of the Lord and saying, Lord, I remember when you blessed me with this. I want that blessing again. I just want you to constantly let me be there. So you're constantly just rewinding upon that blessing that you have. And you're constantly just asking the Lord to keep you there. You're saying, God, I don't want to go through this trial. I don't want to go through this difficult time, etc. I know it's supposed to make me grow. I know it's going to make me a better person, but I don't want that. I want the blessing. Remember when you bless me? I want you to remain there. I want to go back to that kind of lifestyle. I just want to remain there. I don't need to grow and etc. I just wanted to remain there because that time was amazing. That time was good. And that is what you said to us. You will bless us. So I just want you to keep me over there. Let me be rewinding back to the time that you have blessed me. Now, this is the first forward. And this is again, we found the Holy Spirit. You're constantly praying, the Lord, I need my blessing right now. I don't want this time that I have to wait. I don't want this patience. You think that you tell us to do? No, right now. Not even tomorrow, right now, Lord. You said whatever you ask in your name, you shall receive. And I'm asking right now, Father, I don't want to wait, and etc. All this waiting makes me angry. All this waiting, it doesn't help me because every time I wake up and I realize it's not there, it just angers me and it makes me fall back into like maybe going to sin or something like that. And I don't want it, so I want it just now. I don't want to wait. I don't want to be patient. I know that you know everything. I know that you know tomorrow. I know you have the time when you want to bless me, but I just really want the blessing right now because I know if I get a blessing right now, my life is going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So Lord, if you hear me, I want my blessing right now. And that is you when you pressing the fast forward button. You just want to constantly fast forward to the place when you want the blessing. Now, the other button that we have over here is stop. Pastors coming to you or a man of God or anybody um, coming to you and say, listen, brother, sister, I'm not seeing you in this church uh, no more. Yeah, I stopped going as much. I used to go every day, but now I feel like I don't have time for my kids. I don't have time to enjoy myself. So I kind of stopped that. I'm maybe going to go once a week, maybe once a month, but um, I'm not really going to go as constantly that I, that I used to, you know. Maybe you should be helping in the church or maybe help at a charity or something. And they come and ask you, why have you stopped though? They say like, yeah, I used to give myself, I used to give a lot of my time to the church and other people, but I feel like I don't have time for myself. No one takes care of me. So I'm going to start doing me first and then other people. Yeah, I feel like that is the way I'm going to go. So I'm just going to stop doing all these things that I do. I used to wake up early and pray. I'm just going to stop that. Maybe I want to pray. Maybe once a week or twice a week. I will see how I feel. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop praying every single day. You know, I feel like it's taking a lot of my time. I'm giving God too much of my time. I don't have time for myself. So yeah, I'm going to stop all this constant prayer, constant fasting. I'm just going to take it one step at a time. I'll see how things go. But as for giving myself fully committed to Christ all time, I think I'm just going to stop that. I want to see what the future has planned for me. So this is just an idea at all time you can see over there. It's things that happen in our life, you know, but you never ask yourself, okay, why does this happen? It's because, yeah, you don't allow the Holy Spirit to take control. You are in control. You decide when and how you want to live your life because you feel like, yeah, I know if I go this way, God will help me. But when you're not listening to the helper that he has put inside you, which is the Holy Spirit, how then can the Lord help you? So that was just without the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to do this again. Again, just the same button so I don't get confused. But we're going to do it with the Holy Spirit. So same buttons. The idea is now when you make those decisions with the Holy Spirit. So the play button. Before you wake up, you pray, you give the Lord thanks for allowing you to have the breath of life. Because that is the first blessing that the Lord gives you every single day that you open your eyes. And you say to the Lord, Father, I'm going out to work. I don't know what is out there, but you do. I don't know which way is trouble coming, left or right, but you do. I don't know what the plan of the enemy is out there for me, but you do. So I leave it in your hand. Let the Holy Spirit guide me so that I can go out safe and return safe. I don't want no no um I don't want no problems when I go out over there. And if there's a problem coming, I want the Holy Spirit to show me how can I deal with this problem so I don't fall in the temptations of men. That is you allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. You know that you're not in charge. You do. You know that you can't see the future, but you know the Holy Spirit can. So what you do, you leave first everything upon His hands. Now, the mute button. 
with the Holy Spirit is when everybody comes talk bad bad about you. You hear, oh, this brother, this, 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 that. Did you know I caught with this man? I caught her with this guy. She did this, she did that. She drinks, she did all those kind of stuff that could destroy your day, that could put you in a temper that, you know, you could lose it and do things as you do things in a way that you're not supposed to. And the Holy Spirit just mutes all that stuff. It's as if you never hear it. And your life just goes smoothly. You know, when you hear this thing, like, oh, yeah, this is this about you. You're like, okay. Okay. It's like they're saying that they say, bricks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So it's like the same thing in this scenario. You may hear all these bad things about you. That ain't true. Don't let it hurt you. Trust in the Holy Spirit. You know, you forgive the person, you move on with your life. Because when you allow it to, um, to affect you and take control of you, that's when you fall into sin and do things that you're not supposed to. The Holy Spirit is there to mute all that noise that you don't need in your life. Now, rewind. This is when you are with the Holy Spirit. You ask the Lord to constantly remind you of all the times that He has been there for you. So whenever you feel weak, whenever you feel like, no, I can't do this. I don't think I have the strength. The Lord will remind you. You remember this day when you thought you didn't have the strength and I gave you the strength that you went through? You remember this day when you had the most difficult day of your life, but I gave you the strength that you went through? Well, this is nothing different now because I am still the same God. So therefore, he will constantly remind you so that you constantly have that faith, that strength that you need to go through whatever difficult time that you're going through. Because it gets to that stage, sometimes we lose it. We're like, I can't do it. I can't take it. Enough is enough because we forget Wait a minute, I've been through a difficult time before. I was down, but someone picked me back up. That is what we need, the rewind button, to constantly remind what the Lord has done for you, for us, so that we can constantly be able to move forward, so that we can advance even when things get beyond difficult. Now, with the fast forward button, this is basically, in a way, it is what we're going through just now. A lot of things have happened, especially since uh, the COVID-19. A lot of things has changed. The world has taken uh, um, a, a different ways of life, you know, with all these social distances and etc. You know, there is so much truth and etc. And of course, there's a lot of people that are losing life. So with the Holy Spirit, what you're praying for is basically asking the Lord to fast forward this time of pain. Fast forward this time of sorrow. Fast forward this time that is not pleasing, that hurts, that gives you pain. You want it just to finish. You know, you were saying to the Lord, Lord, I was able to wake up 10 a.m., go to my church, have a beautiful church service, elevate your name with my brothers and sisters. But right now, I can't because there's too much social distances and etc. All the churches are closed. I'm unable to do this. Yes, I know that you live in me and I can pray to you everywhere. But I love it when I'm with my brothers and sisters united in one place to give your name the glory and honor. So I ask you to fast forward this time of grieving and pain and sorrow so that I can have the time that I was in your presence with joy and happiness. So we use this fast forward button not to fast forward our blessing, but to fast forward the difficult times that we are going through. Now, with the stop button, it's basically every time someone comes and tells you, you need to stop being a Christian, you know that? Do you know that um, Jesus was black? Do you know that Jesus was white? Do you know all these unnecessary ideas that they put in your head that wants you to question your faith? The Holy Spirit just puts a stop on it. He's like, no, you don't need it right now. You don't need it right now. Somebody comes at you and says, well, your idea is good, but pff, I don't think you're going to do it because people tried it before you. And they never succeeded. Who are you? The Holy Spirit put a stop. Every time somebody comes to try to bring you down, whenever you're up, or you have an idea, or you want to advance, or even ideas will question your faith or make you doubt God, the Holy Spirit is there and just puts a stop to that. Because it knows that if the enemy weakens your faith, it can destroy you. But when you have a strong faith, you may shake a bit, but you'll never be broken. That is why the Holy Spirit is there to put a stop into all of those who try to bring you down instead of picking you up. So this is all the ideas that was with the Holy Spirit. We had the one without, this is with the Holy Spirit. And even in this scenario, you can see that with the Holy Spirit, it is much better. There is a guiding, there is someone there to help you through all this difficult time. All these things that has happened with the Holy Spirit, you have succeeded. You cannot fail when you trust in the Holy Spirit. You can only fail when you trust in yourself. And if you do a reality check, you can say to yourself, yes, 
I have failed so many times because I have started with the Holy Spirit and I just trusted on myself. But I have not started with the Holy Spirit and ended with the Holy Spirit. So now, the conclusion that I have, it is simple. We went through all the different ideas of waiting for the Holy Spirit. So we went through all different buttons. But there is still one button that we can give the Holy Spirit so that He is in control 24-7 because once He has this button, He's fully in control. And that button is the power button. Give the power button to the Holy Spirit. Because when He has the power button, He has his, He has your life like in His hand. He can guide you. He can say, okay, the Lord has planned this for you. The Lord wants you to go through this path. The Lord wants you to go left instead of right. The Lord is going to lead you here. It is going to be a bit difficult. It's going to get shaky. But the Lord trusts you enough to get you through it. He doesn't tell you how long it's going to be shaky for. But it's going to be shaky for a while. But don't worry. At the end of it, you're going to succeed. If you allow the Holy Spirit to have the power button. It's like you're saying to the Lord, I trust in you and you alone. I don't want to trust in myself. I don't know the future, but you do. And I want to trust in you. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard, I know that I will get through this as long as I have the Holy Spirit. So the message that I have for you today is about let the Holy Spirit take control. Give the power button to the Holy Spirit. Don't take control of your life because we can only see as far as our eyes can see. But the Holy Spirit knows the future. He knows the next second. He knows the nearly seconds. He knows everything. And why not trust in someone that knows the future than trust in yourself when you can only see as far as your eyes can see. So basically that concludes the video for today. I thank the Lord again for constantly giving me knowledge so that I'm able to share uh, my knowledge with everyone. And I thank everyone that watches my video. May God continue to bless you. And if you have any comments or you have anything that you like me to elaborate on, don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. May God bless you. Thank you.